Hello and welcome to Snare Up episode 86, the rather interesting Dapper Atomic Age. Yeah. So this is the fourth show regarding artists that are or are related to Pete Namluk. And Adam or Adam Hart or Uwe Schmidt or Lasik Bentaus or whatever alias he's using has collaborated with Namluk multiple times and has his own releases on the Fax sublabel, including Softcore, one of and one of the tracks from that album we played on our Fax sublabel special. Now, to go ahead and kick things off, we're going to play the very first track from the very first album that he released under the alias of La Sigue Benthaus off of his first album, Matter. Here's the first track, Automotive.
That was Automotive by La Sigbantos, the industrial alias of Adam or Adam Hart or Uwe Schmidt. The next track that we're going to end up playing here is from the alias of Urban Primitivism, which is a hardcore techno alias of his. Here's the title track from the only album released under that name, 684.
And of course, as I mentioned before, Adam did collaborate with Namlook multiple times. One of those outings was under the alias of Subsequence, where they released four EPs of Trance. Here's one of the tracks that they released together called DNS Recombination. DNS Recombination.
EMS recombination. That was something from the fourth subsequence EP. Here's something from the third entitled Walking in My Dreams.
For the rest of this special, we must part ways with Namluk. For the rest of it is mainly going to be Adam on his own. Like, for the next alias, I. That's it, just I. It's a mix of acid and intelligent techno. Here's uh, the title track from I's second album, Tinned Music. Thank you. 
All right, next alias is Almost Digital. It only had one release that was on Hypnotism Records titled AD. It's a collection of various genres of music, house music, IDM, trance. I'm going to play one of the more IDM techno tracks from it called Mier Late.
Time for another single release alias, Flextone. And it happens to be the first release coming from the rather interesting sublabel, which is a sublabel of Fax Records, Namelux's own label. Here's a track from the Flextone album called Flextone A. Thank you. 
time for another alias and another rather interesting release. This next alias is titled Interactive Music. I'm going to play the first track from the Interactive Music album, which is entitled Perm. Thank you. 
All right, time to move on to um, formerly the main alias of Uwe Schmidt, Adam Hart. He used this alias up until 1997 when he switched to Adam trademark. We're going to play a track from Morphogenetic Fields entitled Milagro.
And now, a pre-recorded Grey Star will deliver the news. Welcome everyone to Brain Dance News, episode 7. I'm your host, Graystar. This is a show about new experimental electronic music from the past week, with a few exceptions. Producer and friend Ontology released his new Distance EP back in July. I'm currently playing Me Na Trust, the opener to the EP. Here's Ontology to talk about the new album. Enjoy. So, my name is ontology i make jungle music and stuff or old school jungle and trip hop i guess and stuff like that my inspirations would be dj chrome mr time remark phineas 2 uh kid lip definitely there's all loads i started making like little stupid experiments and stuff with magic music maker back in like 2000 15, 2014, but it was just a little bit of a joke that I would show my friends and stuff, and um, eventually I just kind of stopped. At one point though, I think it was about 2015, I got a Volca sample, and that's when I kind of tried to start getting a bit serious with it. I was just like making, you know, stupid little imitations of trap and everything, because I didn't know how to make trap or anything like that, but I tried so hard to do it with the Volca sample. That was back in 2015. In 2016, that's when I really got serious about it, because that's when I started making Jungle, making it, making it, making it, and I took a bit of a break in early 2017 to experiment with boom bap, stuff like that, you know, hip hop, and then I got back into Jungle, and then I got the AKI 2000 in late 2017, and that changed everything. From that point on, it was just Jungle, 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 Jungle just like working with re noise and everything. It was awesome. That's when I really started to try to like get into SoundCloud. I do all my MIDI sequencing with re noise. Um, there are some tracks I've done entirely in re noise. I don't like having uh, some hardware and some software in a track. I mostly just like having it either all hardware or all software. I, I don't know, that isn't really like a strict kind of philosophy to me. It's just something that kind of happens. You know, because a friend will like send me, you know, a renoise file, be like, hey, use this track, and I'll be like, okay, I'll remix it, and I'll do a full renoise remix of it. Or if I just want to do a tune, I'll either go on the renoise or on the SD1000, but most of the time it's just the SD1000 because I like it. Sounds good. Well, I had like all these tracks set. Like, I, like, me not, me not trust was like a joke plan, I think. I'm gonna be doing like a tape soon, so I was like, well, I don't want to just like go like a year without releasing anything. Oh, a dub plate. Well, basically in Jungle, a dub plate is like an unreleased tune that you drop in like DJ sets and stuff. Like in the physical sense, a dub plate is, it's this acetate kind of, not vinyl, but like disc that's like been recorded onto with a needle. And uh, you can play back the song that's been recorded onto it and use that in a DJ set. But I, when I when I use the term dub plate in terms of an actual tune itself, I mean like just basically an unreleased tune that I want to drop in DJ sets. So it's basically the same thing, but it's just not physical because I can't afford dub plates. They're like forty dollars. It's ridiculous. There are a lot of tunes that are just kind of mediocre, but they're if you played them out in full, you would say that's that's a kind of mediocre tune. But if you put them in a DJ set and kind of open up the kind of middle part, just only use the middle parts of them, you'll be like, that's just a wicked tune. And I'm like, there are, I have a ton of those, and it's like, I want to use those strictly for dub plates, but as for tunes that I'm willing to release, I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, there are some I have, but it's a bit tricky, I guess. I don't know. I need to get back into making some more stuff. I've been on a bit of creative block recently, and um, I just want to get back on the S2000 and keep making music. I want to get into vinyl DJing, but I don't have that much jungle vinyl though, sadly. I mostly have 2016 jungle, because that's when I really started collecting it, but I, I want to get some 95 and 94 jungle so that I can really get into vinyl DJing. 
but I've been using Virtual DJ for uh, almost all of my mixes, and I'm a bit ashamed of that, but hey, it's a bit challenging on there too, because I don't have a controller, so I have to sit there and just click each one of the wheels slightly if they're if they're off, and it's ridiculous. I only use the same one. Me and BC Rider have been talking a lot about like releasing a tape on the Esco Beats. We've got all the stuff ready. It's going. It, it's, it's it's going to get out. We've been talking about it for a long time. He's got all the tapes ready, all the tracks are mastered, and it's almost out. But it's going to be like that's going to be like an album. It's going to come out, I guess. And after that, I want to do an EP with a couple little tracks on it. It's basically one track on one side and one track on the other. I'm thinking that's probably going to be next year, but who knows. Uh, check out Scum Tapes. They're a brilliant label. My man Momsu, Amoeba God. Check out Sleepy Extra. Check out uh, some tapes that's coming recording. Check, check out um, Opti, Izeki, or Slicktick, Reverse Reference, Crave, Andy Jandy, Jake, with, uh, with the three at the end instead of an E. Check out Doom Shot. Just check out everybody. Just go out there and just listen to everything, honestly. Just go into like my following list and listen to everything. Like seriously, there's so much. There's so many people I wanna, you know, shout out. I can't get them all. But yeah. Yeah, it's nice talking to you too, my man. Again, that was Ontology, Mina Truss, off of the Distance EP. Check out the description for a link plus everything else I will be mentioning. Now playing is my buddy Nike Vomita, who released a new EP as well, the Adipem Fex series EP1. A short four-track EP, all great experimental IDM pieces. Uh, the track title here is not really pronounceable, but this is track four, so enjoy. Described on Bandcamp as a compilation of tests, ideas, and experiments. On Bandcamp, this is set as Name Your Price as well, and comes with a bonus track. I'd highly recommend checking it out. Support the artist. Thank you all for listening as well. And that was from Nike Vomita's new Adipem Fex series EP1. Check it out in the description. There's also a new album from Milieu released on recycled plastics called Bismuth Cosmolog. It's described as a simple but funky series of live curiosities and snapshots of moments where the vibrations in the air seem to be mingling just right. These tracks are made on a pretty minimal hardware-based setup, yet are very effective in creating a great atmosphere. This is part of a series that will be released by Milieu on Recycled Plastics. Also worth checking out the physical release of this CD with a very simplistic, clean design. Recycled Plastics does lots of this type of stuff, and they're really great at it. things off, here's a new release from The Field released on Compact. 
the field's new album infinite moment is a six track lp every track is a full journey the shortest track being just shy of nine minutes currently playing the track uh, Infinite Moment, which is the title track of the album. Enjoy. The Bandcamp description on this album states that Infinite Moment is an album filled with hope and draped in a diffuse, appeasing light easing the pain and troubles of the human soul through a lushly forested recital of shoegazing modular, complex textural interplays and solar atmospheric fractals. moment ushers its listeners in a highly immersive final ballet of buzzing chords, trampling drums, and all-consuming drones. Sinking the self with its environment in ways never explored before, this album is a direct soul-to-soul transmission, aiming no further than at finding the right balance between contained emotion and an expressive eloquence. No fluff, no bluff. With Infinite Moment, the field goes straight for the heart, stripping bare of all vain and futile attributes to focus on the very essential. He is hopeful, and so are we. Braindance News is an auxiliary segment of the interactive online radio show Snare Up. Check the description for a link to Snare Up, Credits to the people I interviewed, Ontology, as well as all the releases I mentioned today, plus two other releases. Thank you all for listening. It has been a pleasure, as always, making this show. I hope to see you again next week. Snare up. A quick announcement before we go back to the music. Uh, next week, Snare Up will return to its normally scheduled broadcast time of 6 p.m. EST or 5 p.m. CEST or wherever it changes to. And yeah, for that episode, episode 87, Ken will catch up with the Color Squad once again. Tune in. Saturday, September 29th, for a tour of the output of Color Squad Records, its lore, and its myriad of members once again. Now, we're going to return to the music, featuring a collaboration between Adam Hart and Tetsu Ino. Together, they are known as Data Side for this release. Here's a, one of the tracks from the first release they did, entitled... Torsion.
All right, time to move on to another alias and a different label, Reflex Records. Some of you might not have seen that coming, but yes, Uwe Schmidt has released an album on Reflex entitled Polyester under the name of Lisa Carbon Trio. Here's uh, the, one of the tracks from that album entitled Stereo Cocktail.
it's time to move back to the rather interesting label. For there is an alias called Naturalist, which has one release on that label. Now, this release is quite interesting. For every single track, all 18 of them are untitled, and there's a sticker on the packaging that says, Best Listened To Before January of 2004. Let's see if this music holds up. Here's the second untitled track from that album. Thank you. 
Right. The next release is Brown. The alias is Brown. The album is Brown. The cover art is Brown. But the track titles are not all named Brown, thankfully. For I'm giving you the second track entitled Planter's Punch. Next alias from yet another rather interesting release, Roger Tube Sound Ensemble and their album Pentatonic Surprise. This is supposed to have a more jazzy tone than the rest of the releases thus far. Uh, here's a track from that album entitled Being Enveloped.
And with that, it's time to switch to a new style of Adam's music. After the late 90s and through the early 2000s, Adam began releasing more Latin-influenced music. We're going to start with a new alias on that front called Eric Satin. Here's the track, Follow Me to San Jose. Next alias is Lisa Carbon. Not to be confused with the Lisa Carbon trio, though, yeah, they are kind of related. This track comes from the Lisa Carbon album entitled Standards. It's the third track entitled Duck Cha Cha. What, what? 
alias is Los Negritos. It had only one album entitled Speed, Merengue Megamix 2005. Here is uh, the third track from that release called Muevete. I hope I'm not butchering that pronunciation. alias Los Samplers. It too had only one album called Descargas. I'm gonna play the first track from that album called Mambo Brilliante or HD Mambo.
Time to end this off with probably the most well-known alias out of all of these, Senor Coconut. This alias is used by Adam when he reinterprets older tracts with a more Latin feel to them. So we're going to end this off with Senor Coconut's cover of Daft Punk's Around the World.
And with that, we have reached the end of Snare Up. It's the end of episode 86, the rather interesting Dapper Atomic Age. I hope you all enjoy. Snare Up Radio is live every Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. GMT, or wherever you are in this world. So the time is now advanced one hour whenever Penryn Space Agency is broadcasting. You can visit our stream at twitch.tv slash snareup or join our Discord via the link at snareup.com. As I, men- as I mentioned earlier, next week we're doing another Color Squad special with Tunnel One, Easy Kill, and everyone sharing great Color Squad music once again. see someone's playing Mbop again, per usual. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend that everyone listening check out the rest of the music on the rather interesting label, and the Fax Records label by extension. There's some really, really great music on there, and there's always something that can fit your taste. Speaking here tomorrow for or no next week for that episode. Yeah. Take care. May the lush be with you. Snare up his love. See you later.